With the new Premier League season about a month and a bit away, today I'm going to be giving you guys my predictions for the 2022-23 to Premier League season and where I think each team is going to place. Now you may be thinking, Matty, why on earth are you doing football videos? You never usually do them. Um, I've done one before where I talked about the Mason Greenwood situation, um, but I've decided that because football and sports journalism is something I'm very, very interested in, I thought I'm going to start doing a lot more football videos, like predictions, uh, reviews. If some news comes up in the world of football, I will talk about it. And I, I kind of want to not go down that route fully, but I kind of want to focus on that a little bit more than I have been recently. And I know that a lot of you guys watching are not really into football uh, and for that I apologise But I think it's important that I cater for all audiences here on the channel And also, you know, give the people who like football, you know, what they want And also because it's something I like to do And it's something that I kind of want to go down, as I've already said the route of in the future in terms of more videos like this. Before we get into it guys, make sure as always you drop a like on the video and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, as I said, we're going to start doing more football content like this. I'm going to have a championship predictions coming out in a few days or maybe in about a week or so. We're going to do more. Um, we might even do an updated Premier League predictions a couple of days before the season starts. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing a lot more football content, so make sure you smash the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. Without further ado guys, let's get into my Premier League predictions. In 20th place, rock bottom, I am going to put AFC Bournemouth. Now, apologies Cherries fans, but I feel as though, you know, newly promoted sides of the Premier League, I just feel as though there is not enough depth in the squad at the moment. I feel as though... Dominic Solanke is questionable as a Premier League worthy striker. Is he going to be able to put the performances in next season for Bournemouth? And I honestly think they are going to struggle next year. Uh, Solanke will obviously need uh, someone there to provide him. Um, so I think that Bournemouth are going to need to do a little bit of business in the transfer window to get a few players in as well. Um, but overall, I think it's going to be a tough season for the Cherries. I think they are going to finish rock bottom in 20th. Cherries fans, please don't come at me. Um, but yeah, someone has to finish bottom, I'm afraid. In 19th place, now we have the Yo-Yo Merchants, Fulham. Um, again, I just feel as though, you know, their squad is good, but is it good enough for the Premier League? Is it good enough to put in a good survival fight? Again, Alexander Mitrovic broke the championship record for scoring last season. However, is he going to be able to replicate that in the Premier League? A much tougher league for him to compete in. Um, again, I think that carvalho has gone now. I think he's gone to Liverpool, so Mitrovic is going to need another player in there to, you know, provide him with them balls to put the ball into the back of the net. So as I'm going to say again, as I did with Bournemouth, um, Fulham need to do business in this transfer window if they are going to stay up. But at the time being, I'm going to put them in 19th place. And the final relegation place. I'm going to make it all three newly promoted teams, I'm afraid. I'm going to go in 18th for Nottingham Forest. I think that they have had an, they had an incredible season last season, obviously winning the playoffs and getting promoted to the Premier League. A huge moment for Nottingham Forest as a club and for the fans um, to finally get back to the big time. Uh, I love Nottingham Forest personally, um, but and I, I hope to God they survive, but at the moment I just can't see it. I think with key players such as Jed Spence, who has now returned to uh, the Mighty Borough back on loan, um, I think that they are going to be missing him next year. Uh, I think that the Premier League might just be out of their reach, you know, in terms of the quality. I think that it might be a little bit too hard for them. Uh, again, I think they are going to come straight back down, I'm afraid. I think they need to get a bit of money as well. So whether that's selling Samba, who had a really good season last year, get a little bit of money for him. Or, you know, try and hang on to Spence, which might not mm, might not actually work if Tottenham have anything to say about it due to what we've seen recently. However, I said I want Nottingham Forest to still, but at the moment I cannot see it. So unfortunately, the final relegation place is going to Nottingham Forest. Just avoiding relegation, I have gone for that team on the south coast, Southampton. I think that it's going to go right down to the wire. I think it's going to go right down to the last game of the season for this one. And I think that Southampton are just going to scrape it by the skin of their 
Teeth. Uh, there's not been enough business at Southampton, to put it bluntly, recently in the transfer window. I don't think they've brought anyone in, really. I know we've still got a month and a bit to go, but I think by this point, you know, especially with you know Southampton last year, I would have thought they wanted to build on that, get some players in, and ensure Premier League survival, and ensure that they have quite a decent season next year. I think that we've seen, we've seen the rumours that James Ward-Prowse, uh, aka the free kick king is uh, being targeted by a number of clubs for a move away from Southampton. There is that argument of, are the club going to be finished if JWP leaves? Also, I think that strikers like Che Adams really need to step up if uh, if Southampton are going to survive next year and if they're going to stay up. They could easily finish mid-table, I think, but I've just gone for them to finish 17th and just avoid relegation, just because I think that it's not going to be the best season for them, but they will they will stay in the Premier League. So 17th spot goes to Southampton. 16th spot, I am going to say Leeds United. Now, as a Middlesbrough fan, I know that I am not meant to like Leeds, and I actually don't. I don't like Leeds at all. It's just one of them clubs that I don't like. Uh, I'm doing this as a neutral. Obviously, Middlesbrough are in the Championship. I can't really, I don't really support a Premier League team unless you count West Ham, who I see as my second team. But I'm going to stay neutral all the way through this. Leeds United survived by the skin of their teeth last season. Uh, and I think that next season is going to be another tough season for them, and it's just not going to get any better. I don't think uh, they had. They did struggle a lot last season. They did, you know, fall down. Everyone thought they were going to be relegated, but they miraculously survived. And I think the next season is going to be absolutely no different for them. They need to get some players in. I'm going to say this a lot, but they need to get some players in because they need to prove stronger this season than they did last season. They just don't. They're just not good enough. I think defensively. They are shambles. Defensively, they need to improve rapidly and quickly if they want to survive in the Premier League after next year. So 16th place, it's going to be a tough one for them, but I'm going to put Leeds United. Our second London club of the day, Brentford, I am going to put in 15th spot. Um, you know, I think Christian Eriksen coming in was a huge, huge point for them last season. I think that he... Really did carry the team in that midfield. He was a class player, especially after everything that he's gone through. To come back and put performances in like he did for Brentford last season is nothing short of phenomenal. So I have nothing but respect for Christian Eriksen. Uh, are, are Brentford on their way to becoming an established Premier League team? That's a question that remains to be answered. Let me know in the comments what you think. They are going to need a bit of luck, I think, because I think Eriksen's been linked with the move away. Uh, if he goes, could the whole ship collapse? Uh, again, that's another argument for you to have with yourselves. Um, also, I think strikers Ivan Tony is going to need to step up, a class striker as he is. But I think he might need to do that a little bit more in order to secure a mid-table finish, whether that's just above the relegation zone or a bit higher up for Brentford. Um, so 15th place, I'm going to put the Bs to finish. So Brentford, 15th. Finishing just above Brentford in 14th position, I'm going to put Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, who simply just don't score enough goals. And I think that that was their biggest downfall last season. Um, you know, I've always said with Wolves, they can be a bit of a, a mixed team. They can be either really good and have a great season, or they can kind of slip and fall down and be in a relegation battle. I think that they're going to finish in comfortable mid-table uh, this time. I think that, you know, if they hang on to players like Jimenez and Silva, um, you know, I think that they will have a good season next season and finish in that mid-table position. A little bit higher as well. Who knows? It's football at the end of the day. I want to see Wolverhampton do well. I do like Wolves a lot. Um, I want to see them do well, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. But as far as I'm concerned, for now, Wolverhampton Wanderers to go into 14th position. Now, this next one is very interesting. Unlucky for some, 13th position. I am going to put the Toffees, Merseyside zone, Everton. I think that they could have a great season. They've definitely got the potential to have a great season next year. Obviously, they had a massive struggle um, last season. Everyone thought that they were in a very serious relegation battle and they could have easily been relegated. But I think that, you know, Richarlison leaving could be a very big point. He, they want to keep hold for him. It looks like he is going to stay. They need Dominic Calvert-Lewin to be fully fit because, you know, plagued with injuries last season. If he's fully fit and he has a fully fit season, the sky's the limit for Everton, in my opinion. Also, Frank Lampard's first full season with them. He's going to get pre-season with the squad to get that little bit of depth and that little bit of knowledge about them all. And hopefully he can spur them on to a mid-table finish like I'm predicting. Unlucky for some, as I said, but I don't think it's going to be unlucky for the Toffees next season. Everton, I'm putting us 13th. 
In 12th spot, I have gone for Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. I think Patrick Vieira defied all odds last season when he took over as manager of Crystal Palace. Everyone expected him to be in a tough relegation fight, and he proved all of them wrong. He did an exceptional job, apart from maybe, you know, you know, kicking that fan on the pitch. But, you know, we won't go there. Um, you know, obviously they've had key players like Conor Gallagher, who have now left the club. Could that affect things? We don't know as of yet. But I think they do have a great squad of young players, and they've got a great academy. Elise, if he becomes a regular... By God, Crystal Palace are going to be a force to be reckoned with. I think that he is an outstanding player. We saw him put some great performances in the FA Cup last season. And I think he's definitely one for the future. If he plays regular football under Patrick Vieira next season, I think he's going to grow massively as a player. And I think he will help Crystal Palace onto a very, very nice finish. So next season, I'm going to put the Eagles to finish in 12th place. Up to the northeast now, my neck of the woods. Uh, with Newcastle United, who I've put to finish in 11th place. The Saudi takeover being the biggest point I'm going to make. The money that they have, the potential they have to bring in some great players and, you know, climb the table is, you know, unmatched. Uh, obviously, as I've already said with Leeds, Millsborough fan, I'm not meant to like Newcastle, but I actually like Newcastle. Please don't hate me, Borough fans. I actually like Newcastle. I hate Sunderland a lot more. I actually respect Newcastle as a club. They have some great players in the squad now, I think it's going to be fascinating to see Joe Linton develop as well, St. Maximan, um, you know, players like that to develop throughout the team in that season. And I think that they are just going to keep casually climbing the table and they're going to finish very comfortably in 11th spot. So, the Magpies, I hope you're happy with that. I've put you, I've put you to finish in a very respectable 11th place. Moving into the top half of the table now, and if I haven't said your team already, congratulations, I'm picking you to be in the top half. Uh, coming in at number 10, we have one of the two Birmingham sides, Aston Villa. Now, Villa, I think, ha haven't really been the same since they lost Jack Grealish. I think a lot of people would agree that um, since Jack Grealish has joined Man City. I think that Villa have they've been okay, but they've not been at their fully best. I think that players like Douglas Louise and, you know, the, all, strikers like Ollie Watkins, you know, have, have been some of their best players throughout all of this. They're an established Premier League side by now. I think that, you know, they're going to have it quite easy next season and I'm going to back them at finishing the top half, but only just. Um, so, yeah, I can't really think of anything else more to say about Villa than I think that they're going to finish in the top half. Tenth place for Aston Villa. A bit of a surprise one now, actually. Coming in at number nine in ninth position, we have Brighton and Hove Albion. Now, I know a lot of people might be, you know, turning their heads at this one. But I honestly think that Brighton can give this a good go next season. They got some massive wins last season, including the likes of Man United, when they battered them. Um, but yeah, Brighton are one of them teams now who, as I've said many times, are an established Premier League side by now. And they, you know, they just need to get some players in, they need to buy their way, and they can become a comfortable top half Premier League side because they're more than capable to. I'm a big fan of Brighton and Hove Albion and what they're doing in the Premier League right now. So yeah, uh, Seagulls fans, I hope you're happy with my decision here. Brighton and Hove Albion, I'm putting them to go ninth. Up next, we have the two teams who I think are going to be fighting for that top six place, but unfortunately are going to just miss out. Coming in first at number eight in eighth spot, we have West Ham United, who have become a fully established team who you can see fighting for European football pretty much every season now. They've got some cast players in their ranks. They've got Declan Rice, Jared Bowen, Mikhail Antonio, to name just a few. And there's a very important point to make about Declan Rice, actually. Is he going to stay or is he going to go? There's been a lot of attraction for the young English midfielder, um, who is, you know, I would say the, the heart of West Ham United Football Club. You know, he's an absolutely amazing, amazing player in that uh, central midfield. I'm a West Ham fan myself. West Ham is my second team. Um, but I am staying neutral throughout this whole thing, as I've said. David Moyes, a phenomenal manager and totally the man who I think is the man to lead them forward in the league right now. I think that they're going to be fighting for European football again, but I think they're just going to miss out. Sorry, West Ham. Sorry, Hammers fans. But I'm putting you guys to finish in eighth place. Coming in in seventh spot, we have the Foxes, the pride of Leicestershire, Leicester City. One hell of of a team now who I think are going to be really, really fighting for that top six place, but unfortunately are going to just miss out. They've become a team who you can also expect 
you know, since they won the Premier League all those years ago, they've really been up there mostly all the time now. You know, Jamie Vardy, phenomenal striker. You've got other players there like James Madison, Harvey Barnes. You know, just very exciting, exciting players. And I think that Leicester's one of those great English teams. You know, you've got a great amount of English players in there who, you know, who you know can get the job done. You know, it, it's a great team and I expect great things of them next season. So I'm going to put them to just miss out on the top six. They're going to get seventh spot. Seventh spot goes to Leicester City. Coming into the top six now, it's crunch time. Coming into the top six. Yes, this one is controversial depending on how you look at it. In sixth place, I'm going to put Manchester United. Silly! Mostly because I think that Erin Ten Hag, as their new manager, is the man to take them forward. A phenomenal manager. I can see players like Jadon Sancho having a phenomenal season next year. I think he's going to be absolutely in his element next season. Cristiano Ronaldo as well. I think he could do a little bit better in terms of form. But that can't be helped considering the fact that he needs the service. He needs players in. Man United, I know they're looking at Frankie de Jong. Uh, they need players in there, exciting attacking midfielders to get the ball to Ronaldo for him to slot it in the back of the net. So I think that it's going to be a very good season for Man United next season and maybe the start of a nice turnaround at Old Trafford. So just entering the top six, Manchester United. Fifth place, I'm going to go with North London's Arsenal, who have been up and down to say the least in terms of like fans and stuff like that. Obviously, put in a great top four challenge last season as well. Um, there's very high expectations around Arsenal, I think. I think that they need to prove themselves that little bit more. They need to get players like Martinelli, you know, you need to get them at their absolute best. And I think that bringing in some big name signings and that will help too. Is Mikel Anteta, you know, the right man for the job? We don't know in terms of the manager role. I'm very, you know, questionable on that. Let me know what you think in the comments again. But I think that if we're, if Arsenal, sorry, get their signings right, if they get everything right and they just, you know, they have players at their absolute best, I honestly think they'll finish in the top six. So next season, I'm going to go Arsenal finishing fifth. Don't come at me. In fourth place, I'm going to go with the Blues, Chelsea, who last season had a great season. But I've said this so many times. They need some good signings. They have been linked with Neymar. Yes, you heard that right. They've been linked with Neymar. Imagine Neymar in the Premier League, especially for a team like Chelsea. They could easily finish higher than where I've put them in fourth. I think that a lot of their players have been linked away from the club, which could be damaging if they're, all their deals go through and they do leave Stamford Bridge. However, I honestly think that Chelsea are just a great team. They've got great players in there. Mason Mount, you know, to Mason Mount stands out for me. Uh, always been a great admirer of Mason Mount. But if they get players like Neymar, can you imagine the hype of having a player like that in the Premier League, especially at a big club like Chelsea? It'll all remain to be seen. But I'm going to put Chelsea to finish in fourth spot. In third, the top six is really being dominated by London clubs, really. Um, we're going to go with Spurs. Now, who I think... Have put, got, already got some great signings in this window. I'm looking at Basuma. I'm looking at Perisic to name a few. Antonio Conte is going to want to finish high up the table. We know what his standards are like as a manager. You know, Harry Kane, Hyung min Son, that link up's going to be crucial if Spurs want to get into the Champions League next season. I think that they are going to finish high up the table. I think Harry Kane's going to have a great season of goal scoring. Hyung min Son as well is going to have an absolute blaster, as he always does. Especially with their new signings, as I said, as Basuma and Perisic. They could really help the team as well. So I'm going to put Spurs to finish third. Now, I might change my mind on this one, but at the moment, Tottenham Hotspur, you're going in third place. Here we go then. It's the battle of the two who you always thought it would be. And in second place, I'm going for, drum roll please. Liverpool. Yes, I'm putting Liverpool in second place. Sorry, Liverpool fans, if I got your hopes up there. Um, but yeah, what can you say about Liverpool? A phenomenal team. They've brought in a great player in Darwin Nunes. Who is is he going to be good in the Premier League though? Who knows? That we'll have to wait until we actually see him. The loss of Sadio Mane, I think, is going to hit Liverpool quite hard. I think that Salah, Salah needs to be on absolute top form next season if they're going to challenge and even win the title. They're obviously going to challenge for it. I think that they could win it. But Salah needs to be on top form this season. Players like Bobby Firmino, Diego Jota. And, uh, oh, what's his name? His name's escaped me. His name's escaped me. What's his name? Oh, no. I can't remember his name. 
Never mind, you know who I'm talking about, the Brazilian one. Um, but yeah, they all need to be in top form next season. Liverpool are going to be challenging for the title, but can they win it? I'm putting them in second for the time being. And as much as it pains for me to say this because I hate Manchester City, um, I honestly think Man City are going to run away with the title once again. You know, a massive, massive signing in Erling Haaland, who I think is going to have a field day in the Premier League. He's going to bag so many goals. An all-round class team, Jack Grealish in there, João Cancelo, Ruben Dias, Ruben Diaz. You know, they're going to be... I don't want to say unstoppable, they're going to be close enough. They're going to be an absolutely nightmare to try and beat. Pep Guardiola, absolute masterclass in terms of a manager. Now, as much as I don't like Manchester City, I think that they are a phenomenal team. Nobody can deny it. You have to be an absolute idiot to deny that. Manchester City are a phenomenal team, even if all of the signings have come from oil money. But, you know... I honestly think Man City are going to do what they did last season and run away with the league once again. That's just what I think. So, winning the Premier League and wrapping up this Premier League predictions video is going to be Manchester City. Right then, guys, that concludes what I think the table is going to look like next season. Please let me know down in the comments if you agree, if you disagree. Would you switch a few positions around? Do let me know. I'd be very interested to hear what you have to say. Now, let's hit the outro. I know I've been here for quite a while. My dog's barking, so that's probably a good time to end. Right then, guys, that's going to be that for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please, again, make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you all in the next video, which is likely going to be championship predictions for next season. Oh, very exciting. Uh, catch you all later, guys. Have a great weekend. Take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.